In this presentation, we're going to look at the transport system in plants. Specifically, we're going to look at a number of the structures and how they're able to move water and minerals into the plant and move products of photosynthesis around the plant. So first of all, we're going to start with the root hair cells, which we've already looked at previously. We're going to go through in a little bit more detail uh, to tie it in with the rest of uh, the plant. So our root hair cell is this... Uh, extension on what we call an epidermal cell. So epidermal is the cells that line the outer part of uh, the root and, and the leaves. So they're epidermal cells. So this is specifically is our root hair cell. These cells are called parenchyma and on the other side here this long tube-like is our xylem and we'll look at xylem further on in this presentation. So in terms of the function of the root hair cells it is to draw in water and minerals. Okay so water and dissolved minerals which are inorganic uh, materials, so water and dissolved minerals from the soil into the root hair cell across the parenchyma, and it does this in a number of ways and into the xylem tissue. Okay, so water and dissolved minerals move into the root hair cells and end up into the xylem tissue where it's drawn up into, uh, into the leaves. So root hair cells form the younger parts of each root, so the tips of the root. form on younger part of the root system, so around the root tips. They increase the surface area, and they do this by up to about 12 times. Okay, and by increasing the surface area, they are able to maximise the amount of water and minerals. So they draw in water and dissolved minerals in the soil. Now the process that they do this is by a process called osmosis, which we've already looked at. So osmosis, in, as, a, as a form of revision, osmosis is the movement of area from an area of high concentration, which the, hopefully the soil has a high concentration of water. So high concentration. To an area of low concentration in the roots. Now the way that water is drawn away always means that the root hair cells have a lower concentration than the surrounding uh, soil. So water is continually drawn in via osmosis into the root hair cells and into the xylem and drawn away. So the next structure we're going to look at is a xylem uh, tissue and xylem tissue is responsible for the movement of water and minerals from the roots to the leaves. So it's specialised tissue that transports water from roots to leaves. So in the diagram here we can see our xylem xylem vessel and we can also see another structure called the xylem tracheid which we'll talk about shortly. Now the xylem vessel we can see that it is continuous tube this tube is continuous and what it enables is that water can be drawn all the way up 
from the roots to the leaves. Now in order to do this as xylem tissue matures it loses these cross walls, these transverse walls. So they break down. So this forms hollow tubes and the cells in a sense are dead. There are, there's no nucleus, the cytoplasm is no longer and uh, the, tubes are, the tubes need to be supported by other cells around them. One of the other ways that they support themselves, and we're just going to draw this in with another colour, and purple's a good colour because in cells it often stains up this colour. I'm just going to draw over the top of this, but we, what we see is we have lignin spirals. Now lignin is a compound that helps to reinforce the structure. So the next structure is the, the xylem tracheid. So these are elongated and they're what we call tapered. They're tapered at either end and they have these characteristic pits drawn in by these uh, dots. Now these are associated with uh, the xylem vessels and they do a couple of things. First they provide structural support for the xylem vessels and also it's thought that they maintain osmotic pressure when transpiration is not occurring. So as water is not evaporating from the leaves, as a process that we'll talk about shortly, uh, these enable uh, the tracheids hold on to uh, water and maintain that uh, pressure. So in summary for xylem tissue we see they are tissue that transports water from roots to leaves. The xylem tissue is has a quite a large lumen, which is this uh, diameter basically, this area with inside, so quite a large lumen. Same as when we're talking about blood vessels, we talk about the inside uh, diameter as the lumen, the inside of the, uh, the vessel as the lumen. The, the cells are dead and they're continuous. So the transverse walls break down and uh, they become continuous tubes and they are reinforced they are reinforced by lignin spirals the other thing is we have uh, these uh, tracheid xylem tracheids and they are in association in association with the xylem vessel and help to maintain osmotic pressure and to provide support for the xylem tissue. The other type of transport vessel is what we call phloem. Phloem is, is, is different uh, to xylem in two ways. First of all, xylem is responsible for transporting products of photosynthesis. So your sugars. So that within the leaves, photosynthesis occurs and makes a sugar. Uh, the sugar is then either used in other parts of the plant or it is uh, stored in, uh, in fruits or in uh, legumes. So uh, it transports products of photosynthesis and it does this unlike xylem which travels from the roots to, uh, to the leaves. Uh, xylem vessels, the, the movement of its products can, can move both ways. So movement occurs in both directions. So these uh, crude diagrams uh, represent what uh, phloem looks like. Now phloem cells are a little bit different. Uh, they have uh, in a sense lost some of their compo cell components. However they're still living. They still have uh, cytoplasm and mitochondria but they have no nucleus. So this is our phloem. So they still retain cytoplasm and mitochondria they have no nucleus now that is the job of the companion cell the companion cell helps to keep the xylem tissue alive and it has a nucleus so it helps to support the, uh, the phloem tissue Now, so these 
This flow and tissue is what we call sieve tube elements, and more specifically, we call them sieve tube elements. Okay, the reason because of that is because they have these sieve plates. Now what these are, are perforated transverse walls. So the perforated transverse walls. So unlike the xylem tissue where it's continuous, the phloem tissue has these perforations as we can see by these dots here. Okay, and these perforations allow the materials to move from one part of the sieve tube element into another part. So the phloem, as I said, these sieve plates, and we should more appropriately call these sieve tube elements. Sieve tube elements. So as we said, materials can move in both directions. So we might uh, we might show that by the color red. Okay, so they can move this way and they can move that way, depending on where they need to go to whether they need to uh, go to uh, produce fruit or whether they're storing them in legumes in the roots. A uh, phloem can move things in both directions. Now to do this, unlike in xylem tissue, xylem tissue is able to draw the water up by, uh, first of all, it draws it in by osmosis, which is passive. It doesn't require energy. Passive movement does not require energy. Uh, in phloem tissue, because we're moving sugar from areas of uh, from lower concentration to higher concentration, say a fruit where there's lots of energy, then it requires energy to load things on into the uh, phloem tissue. Okay, so, so energy is required. To load sugar. into sieve tube elements. And this is because of a couple of reasons. It, it, obviously, as I said, it's going from a low concentration to a high concentration, so it's active transport. Or as we've described earlier in this course, it is against the concentration gradient. So the concentration gradient is, uh, if you're a line going up, we've got low concentration of sugar to high concentration of sugar. So to do this, we require the input of energy. So input of energy. So in revision for phloem, we see that phloem has a, a number of uh, tissues associated, and there are companion cells which have a nucleus and help to support the, the activities of the sieve tube elements. And the sieve tube elements, are, unlike xylem tissue, they're not continuous. They have these uh, sieve plates, uh, they're perforated transverse walls that allow the movement of uh, products of photosynthesis to move from where they're being produced uh, to where they're going to be stored. And to do this, energy is required. Because it's moving against the, the concentration gradient from a low concentration of sugar to a high concentration of sugar in the storage area, energy is required to draw the sugar into the sieve tube plates and to eventually move it to where it needs to, uh, to go. Now we're going to look at uh, stomates and lenticels. Now st stomates, and uh, specifically this uh, drawing here, we can see we have this area is what we call a stoma, so plural would be stomates. So this is the, the opening to inside the leaf. So we're opening into the mesophyll, the area that is uh, a lot more space for the filling up of uh, for gases and water vapour. So that is our stoma, and we have here our guard cells. Now the guard cells work in combination with another guard cell and they're bean shaped and they create an opening which can either open or close depending on the needs of the cells. So when uh, they are open, water 
moves out by evaporation and this is part of the transpiration stream that's so important to draw water from the roots to the leaves but also what moves out is we see oxygen gas moving out which is essential for all other life on earth the carbon dioxide moves in so we have oxygen moving out and carbon dioxide moving in when the stoma is uh, is opened the guard cells are allowing the stoma to be opened now it is thought that they're able to do this they're able to stay open when the cells are full of water so they have an inner cell wall is thicker than the outer cell wall so when there is plenty of water available uh, the guard cells become turgid turgid just makes basically means full of water so turgid so full of water so guard cells become full of water and the inner elastic wall stretches and the outer wall um, walls do not bolt so basically what that does is it creates a, an opening this gets wider uh, so once these guard cells lose water so we can see the uh, stomates uh, the stomates are closed up here so the guard cells have uh, lost water and they return to uh, to close the cells so this would prevent further water uh, further water coming out of uh, the, the inside the mesophyll of the the leaves so prevent too much water loss and also at, Obviously, if it's preventing water loss, it's also going to prevent the exchange of gases as well. Lenticels, which are not drawn here, so lenticels, which are not drawn here, are pores. These pores occur in the woody parts of the trunks and branches. The lenticels enable the uh, tissue underneath the the trunks and branches to uh, to also breathe so they allow gases exchange in the areas that aren't uh, aren't leaves how they appear is like uh, clusters so clusters of loose cells so they appear like clusters of loose cells And the gas exchange through lenticels occurs, occurs very slow. So gaseous exchange is very slow. And much slower than through the guard cells. So in summary, the, the role of the stomates is gaseous exchange. So roll. gas is exchange. Now that's controlled by the guard cells opening and closing and those guard cells open when they are turgid full of water and close when they have lost water and this prevents too much water loss so guard cells control water loss So not only is it important for gaseous exchange, it also allows water to transpire from the leaves and this helps the transpiration stream. So it helps assist in the transpiration stream or drives the transpiration stream more, more properly. So it drives the transpiration stream, which brings water from the roots of the leaves. So this diagram represents a, a crude plant uh, with our, our root structures, a trunk or stem, a branch, and a very lonely leaf. So we know water moves into the roots by osmosis. So water moves in by osmosis. So area of high concentration of water. area of high concentration of water to an area of low concentration in the roots. 
Now the process of how it's drawn up is, uh, is, is quite a technical process and not all of it is going to be covered in the preliminary course. However, what we, what we do know is that uh, it is the evaporation. So evaporation through the stomates, evaporation of water, through stomates, that drives this whole process. And we call this transpiration. So as the water evaporates through, uh, through the stomates, it draws water from the xylem through the leaf structure, through the mesophyll layers, and, and, they, and keeps on drawing it out and evaporating. So as long as the guard cells are open, the stomates have a, a gap that allows water to evaporate. This creates pressure. Now, as this creates pressure, water is drawn and it can do this over well over 100 meters for some of the taller trees so water is drawn from the roots to the leaves in our xylem tissue so this occurs in xylem tissue so it wouldn't be able to do this without the evaporation of water at the stomates now there are certain other qualities of the xylem tissue and water itself that water likes to stick together that enables this uh, this uh, evaporation or, or, or transpiration stream to occur. Now how does water get from the very uh, outside epidermal cells to, uh, to the xylem tissue? And also how does water get from the xylem tissue to the mesophyll layers uh, and, and uh, out through the guard cells? Now it does this in one of three ways. It does this in one of three ways, which we're just going to outline here. So water moves laterally, so it moves laterally. Cross plant or via. And now there are three ways. So it does this via cell walls. So it travels along the cellulose cell walls. It does this through cytoplasm. So the water moves from cytoplasm to cytoplasm, again by process of osmosis. Or it moves through vacuole to vacuole. So there are three processes. The water moves by the cell walls, cytoplasm to vacuole. So that enables the water to get from the root hair cells, the epidermal cells, through the parenchyma cells, to the xylem tissue drawn up via uh, transpiration stream and evaporated out through the leaves but also drawn from the xylem tissue in, uh, in the leaves through the mesophyll layers and out through the guards uh, the stoma created by the open guard cells now the last thing we're going to look at is how the xylem and the phloem look within uh, within cross sections so if we take a cross section through the roots, this is going to help us to identify them in our prax to come. So this is a cross section of the root. So we'll just put cross section root. So we might uh, label the xylem in red. And it looks like a star pattern within the root section. So this is the xylem, xylem. Now the phloem in this section occur around this star pattern. So that's characteristic of a cross section through the root. If we then took a cross section through the trunk, or through the stem, depending on uh, the type and size of the plant, we would see that there are clusters of the transport vessels all around the branch. Now the xylem tissue occurs on the inside with the innermost half of it. And the 
form, which we'll do in blue again, is the outermost. The water is traveling closer to, to the center of the branch or trunk. That's foam. And the other one is xylem. Now a leaf, we'll do that in green. We can see that the xylem is on the superior surface and the phloem is inferior on the underside. Okay, so in summary, water is able to move by transpiration and this is brought about by evaporative cooling, creating the pressure to draw water from the roots to the leaves. And the xylem tissue and phloem tissue are distributed differently if we look at the roots, the stem or trunk, and the leaf. So it's in a star pattern, the xylem tissue in the roots, and then it, it forms the, the innermost layer of our, uh, our conductive tissue, our transport tissue, uh, in the stem with the phloem on the outside, and in the leaf, the phloem is on the underneath and the xylem on the surface. Thank you, Year 11, for watching this presentation. Please make your notes and uh, we will discuss any uh, questions in class. Remember to do the, the quiz. Thank you.